Okay, welcome everybody. Um, welcome to uh, Nick Tony, who's joining us on Zoom, uh, and uh, Sean Jeff, and the staff who's also on Zoom. Um, he is the public. Um, Jack and Brad, welcome back to the meeting at Arts for full council of August of 2022. We'll start with our public forum. And we have one speaker who's asked to speak. Uh, it's Brad Howard. So, Mr. Howard, we're welcome to bring to you a special stand that you need there. And we have five minutes. I'll try and be reasonably short. Mr. Mayor of Council, I've come to discuss the Patton uh, Bar School. Yes. I've come to discuss this uh, $40 million compensation that we've got for selling our three, out the three waters. Um, when I look at what you're proposing to do, I think, well, the money that you're getting actually belongs to the ratepayers that have paid water rates for years and years and years. You're proposing a lot of things for elsewhere, and that money should either be offered back to those who have paid for, for the water supply or else put towards their advantage in doing things in the towns that they've paid money into. And I wonder why we need a cultural centre in Westport when we're getting one in Hope and Funakite at least at the cost of eight to ten thousand a ten million dollars. That will show all the culture that we need. Um, just how many cultures have been involved, I don't know. But I do wonder why we need to be looking at a cultural centre here in Westport. Um, an evacuation centre. Now, when we look around, we've got plenty of evacuation centres. We've got schools, we've got halls, we've got three schools, we've got the um, MBS building here, and we've got other areas of town. But if Westport is to be evacuated, we don't need them because you'll have to get out the higher ground. So I ask councillors to look at the sensibility of putting in a cultural centre and an evacuate combined with an evacuation centre, which will only take ten or people anyway. We've got plenty of facilities, as I've said, and we don't need more evacuation centres in town. Uh, I would ask councillors, how many of you have looked at our footpaths in town and gone out on a mobility student's trial? Is there anybody here that has? Not one. The town is getting older, getting an older population. We're getting people coming here to retire. We're looking to make the town attractive and attract people to come here on holiday and to live. And yet we look at our footpaths. Now, the money that you're looking at is three and a half million to start with, and ten and a half million in 2024 could well be spent on footpathing and upgrading the area. I've been out on a scooter when I was on the council, this came up at that state, and I got a scooter and went out and tried it. Now, as late as half past 10 this morning, I was having a cup of tea with somebody, and I mentioned that I was coming to council this afternoon and going to the and I thought the footpaths were killed. He said, Oh, Christ, he said, I'm on a mobility scooter. He says, It's like this. I ask you to look at this money and spend it wisely, people. Upgrade our footpaths. As I told you, Mr. Mayor, when I spoke with you the other day, you remember I came here a while back, a few years ago now, and dumped a heap of cloth on the table. I can still take you and show you where that quarter of a square meter of moss came from in places. 
accounting being touched at all, and not one thing being done with the footpath. Now, I ask you councillors to look at upgrading to make it more attractive. Drive into Palmerston Street, open your eyes and look. What do you see? A second rate footpath, a second rate appearance tower. Please look at the footpaths and do something about them. They need upgrading and they need upgrading badly. I don't know what your budget is for what, it hasn't been advised, but I would ask you to advise the right page and consult them and see what they want. Ask the right page, see what they want that money spent on. You've got 14 million that you're talking about, and ask the right page what they want. Consult them and listen to them. Most right players now will say, well, it's now it's going to council Rome in just a moment. They don't take any notice of you anyway. So listen and hear what they have to say and what they want, because it's their money and it's their money that you're spending. Council, I understand, were discouraged from audit, by audit department from spending money on three water schemes. And what I see in your... Uh, what you're proposing to do, a lot of it is taken in three water. If you sold out the three water, we'll make use of it. Let them do it when it comes up. We'll pay for it anyway. So, but don't carry, there's some other things that do need doing and need doing urgently, which council obviously are not doing. So please, Listen to what ratepayers want, consult them, and see what they're after. And not just go head in the sand and say, well, this is what you're getting, and that's it. The other thing I'd like to say is local government New Zealand. I was amazed when I read in the paper the other day, we're paying $33,000 a year to belong to local government New Zealand. I brought it up when I was on the council. They're toothless, they're gutsless, and they are a government bend over organisation. If the government say you do this, yes, boss, we'll do it, and that's all you get. And you're paying $33,000 for a rate payers. You're paying $33,000 for belonging to what I consider and a lot of other people consider is a toothless, gutsless organisation. We get very little results for it. <clears throat> 33000 is a lot of money. If that figure is correct, it's a lot of money to be paying. And I think you should look at it and say, hey, either you give us something decent and back us up, fight for us, or we leave. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Howard. Any questions, Justin? Well, thank you very much. Good. Thank you. We'll get a written uh, response after uh, the next day or so. Councillors will deliberate after uh, today's meeting. Um, Jack, you don't have anything you want to add? No? Good. I don't have to speak. No, you're more than welcome to attend the event. Okay. That brings to a close the uh, public forum. So we will. Uh, now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, apologies. I do in this apologies today. With me online. So if there are no apologies, seeing you uh, in the again, you know, uh, agenda item number two, uh, members interest study any matters on the agenda today. Which members wish to discuss your financial? Um, Councillor Hayes, 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 and then I'm going to be excluded as 19 
So on the resources now. Yes. It's not actually a presentation around that. You want to discuss that? Yeah, I do. Discuss two items. And then because there's no recommendation, but but surely it must be done. Surely it should be done. See the what's called the minutes, which is in the resource center. Because they, they are care of the what the care of the embassy or not, and we must surely accept them as a true correct record of the county planning operations. That's a that's a fair point. We can add an additional resolution to accept. Okay, so yes, I can yes, so I'll work on the wording for that. And meantime, so I would refer councillors to the resource centre yep. on the other um, elected members tab. Yep. So we're going to find it. It's good. Yes, I'm a council report. Council reports. Um, yeah. And 2022-23 in the plan. And the minutes are separate. Um, Tell you. You've already got those. Yeah. 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 yeah, so um, this is in regard to the starting on page nine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that starts at the top of page four. Yes, um, so at the top of page nine, but this also does refer to all references to the community grant support. Um, the resolution states we will reinstate community grants and we will not be granted through the additional funds to the status quo. It's not quite correct because you will recall, councillors, that what we did agree to was to increase the community grants to 75,000, which was effectively 65% of the 100,000 in the long term plan. And previous to that, in our draft year, the plan was. 50,000. So if you read that number, it sounds like that we're increasing back up to 100,000. That is correct. Mm -hmm. The annual plan, I will say, which is in our resolutions, is correct. But I just want to make sure these minutes truly reflect what we decide. So that is to go all of those anything that refers to, to the grants. And then on page so two. Just before you do, I'll just see you. Right. Thank you. I'm just going to go to page 27 on this. In the end, we can't just follow the cost increases. Which would be different. Okay. Yeah. 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 What page, sir? 27. This starts with number 42, Grand Lab. Yeah. So this is capital part. This is just for clarification of what you know. Because I know that we had quite a discussion about this at the time what to do with reserves contributions. So what it says in the commentary is that 170,000 is allocated to the allocated to reserves fund. 66,000 is already earmarked for the swing, etc. 110 will be allocated. 60 for disabled toilet in Caribbean, then 50 unallocated remaining. Now, I just need some clarification because I thought the 60 that we agreed to for the Caribbean disabled toilet was above what had been allocated out of reserves. So we were going to be the same amount to be allocated from reserves, and then it was going to be plus 60. And I know that we laid at this point for quite some time for clarity, but when I read this, that's not what it's intended, what it's saying. So I need some clarity around that. But we all agreed it was one second team that's already in the budget, and it was going to be plus 60. Mm -hmm. That was my so, thank you. Yeah, that was my reflection of what I think we've just described it. Okay. So, then I'm seeing for an amendment to this one as well to be sure that that 60 doesn't come out of the council with the account paper because otherwise it became something else out and that wasn't the intention. Yep. So, we've um, done our two amendments, please, to, to the minutes. And based on that, I'm happy to move. So, we'll be clear on this one. 
gets to say, so once again, they allocated to reserves funding. Blah, blah, blah. An additional 60k from reserves for this one at the period. What is the wording you wanted to repeat? Well, what I'm basically wanting to repeat is that anything that we approved within this, within after the deliberations, it's over and above what was already in the budget to reserves. Okay, so that's the Karami and Toya and the King George Park, if that wasn't already in the reserves. So that that's just thinks that clarity around exactly what our intention was. Otherwise, what will happen is it will all come out of the reserves already out there people, something else will happen. Okay. Mm -hmm.
So once again, just for clarity within this report, if anyone we get that look at it, they will clearly see that these were the matters that councillors debated in the deliberation. So what I wanted to be added to the body of the report, which once again I will say does not get the resolutions but should be in the report, uh, is the carryover of the current private community facility, the two reserves, King George Park and the Paramere campground for the disabled chair. That was two reserves funding. Yes, please. Yeah. And the current party. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Eles puderam analisar o nosso paciente para o que eles ganharam no tempo. Ensure that uh, toll rates are met so that 
One is that the key managed to make sure that this management of motion that we have this council. And this report showing that that's actually the problem is working really well because we've got some um, definite uh, understandings in the report because of the fact that the textual works have been taken and we've been trying to do some time to the business and the report. So I think it's a really good story. Um, the information in this report is subject to um, final end of year adjustments. So we've got two more months of reporting to show you. And these will certainly clean our energy tidy up for our grants in advance and other things like that. But what we're seeing here is a lot going on in the council, but actually it looks like business is usually financed for the right to be So it's a really um, good story for a long time. Thanks, Ms. Brooks. Any questions, councillors? Yeah. 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 Right up front, but I have not got this question in advance, so totally forget that we can't have to. It's just been a busy few days, week from reading it. Um, it's just with regard to expenditure on amenities and reserves and wastewater. Um, the comments around it are savings across a number of activities, mainly in our amenities for amenities and reserves. And while it's great to have some savings, I guess my question is around, I hope that it is that. I'm hoping that's not at the expense of people who serve it. So not deferring maintenance. Um, is it that the maintenance never occur? If you get my slight difference. Um, because I don't want to see us get into the new year and find that we deferred maintenance and we had a surplus that we were treating that. Thank you. Yes. I think that's your the cross that wasn't within the property manager for eight months. Um, however, we have been cut in position, so all things were um, any commercial that came up, and, and we are giving those asset management plans to ensure things in place in the future. So nothing will be deferred over everything was completed as a thing that's been just on the list going. There's a quite sick my mind to deep sleep, if I'm honest. There's a, I, I totally understand what you're saying, but you make it sounding like as the work came out, we did it. But if we had pre programmed data, it should have been done. My question then is is that going to be brought up within this financial year, or is it going to be carried over? Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. There will be some work carried forward um, and rationale behind that when we have vacancies um, whilst the work program is there. It, it didn't run to a timely um, fashion, plus with COVID and with the um, um, the floods as well. So that there will be, uh, I expect, a small amount of carrier. There's been no intentional savings to save money. It's just been a range of time issue. So we've you... deliberately not not done something to to save money. Uh, is what I'm trying to say. No, I said I totally hear what you're saying. I guess my, my further may I have something interesting. Yes. Um, my further thing is the, that we so we've rated for it to be done this year. It yes. doesn't get done, it gets carried over, it's not a carryover like the cap, it's going to carry over. So that's a cut off at the end of the financial year. Next year the work plan's done. We haven't rated for it in that year, so we didn't have to accept that there'll be no run in Barony and last two next year. Because we're not writing for the same number in two years. Just mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Let's try to assist um, with the uh, For the budgets that have been set in this annual plan, the reviews we've made of the uh, expenditure required and the activity to make sure they're sufficient to meet those needs. So, having a look at what the budget is proposed and making sure it's going to meet the needs of the board, taking into account that we went well on track this year. So there is a sufficient budget there to keep up to date with what's needed, we believe in this budget. So that we have a look at what we haven't actually cut, cut that and just and we're not actually creating a foul way of work in front of us. We've actually got sufficient budget to meet the needs of all of the resources we take on. And I suppose what's also supporting that is the additional work that's been put into the reserve fund contribution to the community. This is supported. I, I absolutely hear what you're saying. I, I'm just sorry, we rated for it in this year. I hope to go on about it because they even sure we were rated for it next year. So we haven't spent what we've 
And we double rate it. Okay, I've got the insurance. Do this, but I'm not going to lay that's the rules. Yeah. Sorry, would it not be correct that I mean, you might need to find 161,000 dollars of reserves contributions coming to amenities next year? Is there an element of top up to the work that wasn't completely paid coming from reserves contributions? You need that rather than money? Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the reserve fund contribution is capital work for new and improvements on the reserves. Um, so there's, a, there's some improvements in that area. I believe the question was initially brought around whether it appears it's under budget for this for this current kind of year. And I was so the question I believe is has it been double rated? The um, answer is the Funds go into the dual fund available, and so therefore the work is scheduled and it's in the plan that's not the plan. I have to mention the reserve fund contribution for more assistance. On a similar way, we're looking at um, just above that on page um, 54. 1.8 million of budgeted roading works has been programmed for next year on actual year, which is on a similar way. And um, the corresponding funding from NCTA will be claimed then. So, how much of that one thing that was actually rated for? Because as a um, seventy three percent of that, because that's not even thirty percent, because we normally um, have seventy two percent that, and one point eight seems an awful lot of budgeted work that hasn't been done. So. Mr. Duff, please. Um, yes, that's that's uh, a good question. The 1.8 million uh, we would have to provide a breakdown for the course roading works on a three-year uh, transport plan, and uh, and actually the provision to do uh, shift within that period is is uh, um, allowable certainly for the for the agency funding contribution. Uh, in terms of rate payer contribution, we have to look at actually what comprise that 1.8 because we, we do have uh, fully funded uh, roadings in, in, in terms of uh, SDR as an example, uh, as different to local roads. Uh, but generally speaking, the, the transport program is deliberately set up on a three year plan and uh, from uh, one fiscal year to the other. Uh, in terms of what actual roading uh, works wasn't completed, uh, I'll also say that uh, the measure effectively uh, the weather events and the flooding in terms of uh, non annual plan works would be a, a, a likely contributor to be able to get to VAU works. Uh, that, uh, if you like, uh, additional works that we've got to uh, look at. Thank you. 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 No, because the same, you know, you're saying over a three year plan now period, and this is saying that one point eight has been programmed for the next year. So it's one point eight just for next year, not over three years. That would have been done this year. And what well, I was just going to say, I think what he's saying is that the work program is a three year program and then they, they and the ability to remove within the three years the actual jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Like like. That's great. So, any other questions on Councillor Rutherford? Yeah, yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Well, I'll be small bananas compared to what we've been talking about. I see in the income for amenities and reserves a bit of a commentary around uh, lower income from leasehold preservers as a consequence of. Uh, 
uh, people who are injured into which I'll cut into three or four and I will present. And the other thing, of course, I know is that the big recovery from the brewery side, so I'd like to know what steps um, management is taking to recover that money. We're pretty, um, we're pretty keen on following up with rate payers who don't pay. Um, what steps are we following? So I, I know that you said it's unlikely, but I would hope we're using every avenue to open to us and attempt to recover that um, police. In terms of, um, I'm happy to answer. I think at the time we, we brought the fact that um, uh, it was unlikely well, we're not going to be able to recover. So, the, in terms of the brewery having been um, um, sold at considerably less value, there was a lot of debtors. And we had a discussion as, as council, kind of maybe even at FRAC, that actually what was important was whatever money was paid back actually went back to the local businesses who were owed money. Um, and that's where whatever proceeds from the sale went to back to local businesses that were owed money from the debt and um, as opposed to coming back to council. And in terms of, um, we did not ask the new um, tenant to make up the difference um, in the, um, to make up for the previous tenant uh, in terms of the desire to see the new business there and established, which is working quite well. So thanks for that explanation. I will call those discussions and I absolutely heartily agree that uh, if there is something available with our local supply and stone is out. Um, not saying that, I think we should use every effort we can to, to recover uh, that money or alternatively have a commentary in there that makes it quite plain why we believe we can't recover it because we don't want to see the local community uh, businesses and suppliers disadvantaged. So if we, uh, I don't think it's just a good one. Otherwise, it looks like it's uh, well done, buddy. We're working on it. Thank you. Yeah, I'll add that um, additional commentary and reflect it back to the paper that we brought. Um, what do we want to go to from the council? Yes, it might be worthwhile as part of that, just understanding what the likely costs of the team are covering out there, because I think we're going to find the likely costs of the team are covering far out by the team that we might possibly control. Okay, we'll move this along. That's been, uh, this paper has been moved by Councillor Rutherford. I don't know if you can see and then as the result of the council uh, receives this financial performance report for information. Any good discussion? All those in favour? Any against? Let's go. Right, Gina item 8 is the CCO uh, final statements of intent. For our uh, four entities there. Are there any uh, questions about these before we receive the discussion? Yeah. For recreation. Services and municipal um, airport. So, that's all the questions. So, the recommendation is the council receives the final statements of the to year in the region 2023. Those are from those companies, PHL, and the Commission of Services and the Municipal Airport. I'll do that way. Right. Cuts from my phone. All those moment. Any facts? Is that cuts from the last extension for conflict? No, no, carry no, unanimously. No, you want to That's the excellent. Right. Jim Dryden, this is the sport focus on its current business case. 
Um, so this is the uh, this is John Gardner and Mr. Mabuka. So I will turn to the Duke of the to introduce Piper, and we have the uh, the uh, ping pong is there to um, discuss any questions we have. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be here in this
forgetting it if you try to move the thing with slightly faster. So you can have those changes in hard copy um, that your positions in your life. So they are relatively minor. Mm -hmm. so just to clarify that the hard copy that you've got in front of you are some of the additional changes that were made from the West Coast Regional Council. Um, a meeting yesterday, there's business cases um, and that's <coughs> supplementary to the uh, paper that just um, circulated off one to you, I think, on Monday or Tuesday. Yes, so I might now just go to our, our team online. Um, Mike or John, um, is there anything you'd like to add to what Rachel's introduced? Uh, Tenet Koto Mayor, Jamie, councillors, staff, it's lovely to be part of your team. Uh, Mike and I have enjoyed this journey over the last uh, four and a half months. It's certainly been hectic, uh, but I think highly effective, as Rachel has outlined. Minister Mahuta's expectations were quite clear that 15, 17 February letter spelled those out. There are a few hoops to jump through, as you know. Uh, you've ridden through those hoops uh, with us. And right now, you have a Westport flood risk mitigation scheme, uh, a proposal. And, and we, Mike and I, want to emphasise that point. We know, Mayor Jamie, you're well aware of it. It's a proposal to receive funding, co-investment from the central government. Quite frankly, we won't have a project but we know we've got money. Uh, then it moves to a different phase and we're into special consultative procedures, we're into resource consent procedures, we're into property access matters, we're into detailed design, et cetera, and we move forward. So $56 million for this mitigation of risk proposal, 45 million of it being requested from central government. Uh, the business case in our view is robust, it satisfies the better business case framework that Treasury have us live by, uh, and it has, we hope, your voice well reflected in it. Uh, Mike, you've got a few more comments to add in there, I think. Thanks, John, and good afternoon, councillors, and thank you for your time. <clears throat> As we mentioned in the workshop uh, um, a, a few weeks back, we are actually a case study, so the Ministry for Environment has actually named us in the National Adaptation Plan draft as, as a case study. And we're breaking new ground here. No, no one else has actually nailed this in New Zealand yet. So, so that makes this a difficult and uneasy process to go through. But um, <coughs> I think we should expect to feel uneasy and difficult because that's the nature of the beast that, that we're dealing with. Um, and we can't eliminate all the risk. And, and as Rachel says, that power framework is great because it recognises that and it also recognises that we don't need to do everything tomorrow. Yep, some stuff like the embankment needs to happen as soon as we can, but other stuff can happen down the track a bit. So we're quite happy with the um, the way that the power framework lets us do that. And you know, um, economically, uh, off the record, the guy from Infometrics who did all of that analysis said to us that this is a no-brainer from an avoided cost point of view. So um, um, I think we should not feel shy about this. This proposal stacks up on avoided cost alone. And I don't think there's any need for us to be coy in, 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 in asking for this money. And I'll also kind of add, as I mentioned in the, in the workshop, that there are $1 billion of... Mike, I just put out there's no such thing as off record in a room for media. No, <laughs> no, no worries. The, the, uh, the, the person who said that won't mind me repeating in, in, in public. Mm -hmm. uh, Bear line, it's a no-brainer. So... so um, uh, um, I think it's also worth emphasising that there are a billion dollars worth of Crown assets in, in Westport. So, so um, the Crown is also um, a, a beneficiary of, of, of the work that we have in front of you today, John. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, we've worked at an incredible pace, as we've just noted, and there's lots of detail uh, that is in the back work. There's at least eight input reports that we've drawn upon, modelling, engineering design, the alignment questions, consentability, pricing everything up. Um, engagement with central government officials has been constant and valuable. Uh, hence, though, because of the hectic nature of that process, we've had a couple of wrinkles, and we, Mike, 
uh, and invite you just to talk about those. And hopefully we've now got them resolved. Certainly West Coast Regional Council yesterday in terms of the inland alignment. And uh, there have been a couple of questions around the adaptation fund. Do you want to pick those two up, Mike? Just quickly, councillors. So the inland alignment, so that's option B. Uh, we have shaped the proposal towards option B. That is because as we were writing the proposal, it became evident that when we talk about retreat or relocation and avoid, it made no sense for us to be talking about option A or a combo of those options. So that's why we've shaped it towards option B. I, I have to say um, the final alignment it will be subject to consultation and further decision making. So it's not set in stone. However, um, uh, in terms of having a compelling story to, to present to the government, we thought it was important to be consistent and option B is very consistent with retreat, relocate and uh, uh, avoid. And uh, just finally from me, the adaptation fund, uh, um, we need to do more analysis around, around um, the construction of that fund. We haven't yet developed the evaluation criteria in detail. We do know that the government is not expecting to be liable for complete capital replacement of, of all assets. They know they are expecting us to have some skin in the game, both from a local council and from a private perspective. So I think it's a bit of a balancing game with the adaptation fund between uh, making sure we don't detract from uh, um, the other elements of the investment plan, particularly the ring embankment, uh, um, whilst making sure that we are uh, actually uh, um, getting a decent lump of money to help us uh, um, to help other to help residents to actually do things when the time comes to adapt. So that's it from me, John. Thank you. Yep. So just to close out, Mayor Jamie, um, we're at close out stage. Uh, the minister expected the business case by tomorrow. And I think all going well, uh, we'll meet her expectations. Um, there are a couple of minor cost costing things. We've uh, had to rectify a couple of problems there, uh, apportionment adjustments, and there'll be one or two other minor editorial errors. I think we've got them mostly ironed out, but we would welcome you identifying anything else that's problematic with you. It then goes off to DIA, uh, and they'll have independent advisors, um, Tonkin and Taylor, I think, are in mind, Treasury, Ministry for the Environment, and other officials. Uh, there will be particular ministers on the Resilience Cabinet Committee who will no doubt look at it in detail. The promise is uh, a response by August into September. Uh, let's hope we can hold them by that. I think process is important, Mayor Jamie, and I think we should search out and take up take up every opportunity to talk to ministers uh, if we can seek and secure it uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis so they truly understand the story behind the business case. And, and just to close out completely, it's been a pleasure for Mike and I uh, to work with you and your staff on this business case. Uh, we look forward to your questions and look forward to your um, uh, adoption of the business case. Thank you very much, John and, and Mike. Very, very well done. I think the other thing I would add is, is again, focusing on that process is that this is a proposal, as you touched on, and until funded, we actually don't have a, work, a, a plan of work going forward. And if approved, obviously, it triggers a whole lot of um, obligations for both councils around further consultation with communities and then ultimately those sort of almost one on one conversations with affected parties that has to be required. Um, and yeah, absolutely, it will require a relationship with government and ministers and cabinet members um, to be uh, kept close to uh, make sure everyone understands what it is we're asking for. Questions, councillors? Councillor Rutherford? Yeah, look, um, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I'm not sure, sure how you propose handling these. I have, I have three substantive questions. Shall I address them one, two, three? The first one's pretty easy. So the, the request uh, at the start of the document is 42 million, the one at the end is for 44, and I don't think either of them are on the request. So in terms of paper that we have before us, we need a clarification on that final number. Thank you, Deputy. I've just been handed the paper in the report. So I understand now it's 45, 462, 500. That's, that is the final um, number as far as Mike and John are concerned? Uh, correct. 45 mil. 
Okay, so look, I'll quickly move to my other questions. Looking at the document, looking at the proposal, particularly in terms of delivery, uh, the governance, um, the, the management of the process, if approved, and, and I guess it's going to apply um, no matter whether this particular request is approved at full or, or a lower amount. It raises the question about um, what role will the, and, and this is probably a question for regional more than you guys, but I'm sure you've had this discussion. What role will the special rating district governance board have given that they, it looks like they won't be deciding on um, a program of work that will be decided upon by the reset steering group? And in conjunction with that question, does it now mean that that work approved by a previous at a previous um, governance meeting and directed to West Coast Regional Council, i.e., specifically the remediation work at Morgan's Island and the um, scouring it uh, by their kind of home, and of course also approved was the plug wall starting at Kitoki Bridge and moving up to Wardsow kind of home. How will that work be impacted if we're going to sit around and wait on this funding? Is that work no longer going to proceed? Again, I say you might not be the right people to answer, but I would hope that discussion had been had. Guys, I'm going to um, give you the CEO Rachel Tower at this. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and John might be a good job if you have intel that I don't around the section of the regional council here, but certainly this, this issue of the joint committee of the West Coast Regional Council project could be a long to long term plan being on its part and the steering group and the site of different parts has been incredibly well canvassed by both groups throughout these conversations. The way it's been managed to date is that the steering group is a standing agenda item of an update from the joint committee so that we're making sure that there's a feedback loop between the two entities because the Joint Committee has its role, which is around that particular project with the West Coast Regional Council, and the steering group has its role, which relates to the up and now the original appropriation through the government. I'll pass to John and Mike if they have any further comment around how governance roles might shift if there is a substantial co investment potentially to that 75% or higher level in the the West Coast Regional Council Physical Works project and speak to that aspect of the question. Um, Mike, perhaps I um, will answer the questions about um, O'Connor Home uh, and organs, etc. And uh, you can speak to the interface between the steering group and uh, the rating joint committee. So to my uh, question, uh, Councillor Rutherford, um, funding has been secured, a resolution has been passed for O'Connor Home, uh, Organs Island, uh, Rock Work, that Buller River Bank uh, is a priority. Uh, it was significantly eroded in both storms. That work will proceed no matter what. Uh, uh, but it has now been woven into the complete risk mitigation program co-investment proposal. And if you look at it in detail, it uh, proposes that that uh, be funded uh, from central government in full. So we'll just need to see how that unfolds. Uh, but there's a backstop if we're unsuccessful on that ask. In terms of the phase one Toki to State Hi Highway 1 bridge, you'll note in the report that our engineer, um, Gary, has suggested that phasing should give a priority to the biggest risk, the front door being left open, if you like, uh, which is at the junction of the Bula and Arawati. In other words, the inland part of the proposed alignment. Work was undertaken on phase one in part because we wanted to get going on this at pace and we also wanted to align it with the proposed cycleway. So good progress has been made by Davis Ogilvy in the detailed design heading towards the tender for that project. So it can get out of the blocks reasonably quickly, but the more recent advice is if the funding comes through, then we should focus on the inland portion of the embankment as a priority. Over to you, Mike, on those second set of questions. Uh, um, and just to, to reinforce uh, what Rachel's already advised councillors, um, the, the steering group cannot displace um, um, bodies that have a statutory function. 
uh, and I include the TTPP committee in, in, in that. So the steering group needs to really be a, a high-powered coordination and collaboration tool. And, and um, that, that's how it's currently set, and that's how it will have to be reset in the future. It cannot displace statutory functions. Uh, um, but it does take a lot of coordination, collaboration, and communication to make sure that the various bodies are across what's going on. And as, as um, Rachel has pointed out to date, we've had Mayor Jamie and um, Ellen Birchfield actually providing uh, um, an update at every steering group meeting. We'll need to revisit that with, with a re reset um, um, steering group with refreshed terms of reference to make sure that TTPP is in there as well and to make sure that everybody is, is fully aware of what's going on and that we're, we continue to collaborate. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Did that answer your question? Thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, one brief question through to John Hopley. Um, because West Coast Regional Council is first to offer rank for looking at the business case, um, my editorial changes, I actually feel through Councillor Laura Cole McLaughlin. Um, she assured me that you'd actually got them, John, with cap and butt, but I, I don't see them on the sheet that they've been provided. So one of the main ones I had was the commentary on page 42. I wanted the emphasis changed around, so um, the start of all with emphasis around why we should go for CPP6. And I wanted to add an additional commentary about other than cost, what the benefits were, and those are benefits were, I think we could take out the bill of the upgrade, because it's indicated that should be upgraded for an additional fence. So therefore, you've got a, a bigger footprint, you've got the additional cost again, plus inflation, and plus it's a disruption to all those property owners. My other big point was by going to the r 6 is actually we are decreasing that anxiety and increasing well-being people because it gives them that extra surety. So that's just as important as the economic part. Um, I also question the order actually. They talked a lot about the historical 100 and then moved on to 76. So I just re had requested to reduce that and put the reasons for first and then put the considerations below and not make it so prominent. Um, and I believe that was that taken from the feedback we got back from Laura, was that correct, John? Uh, that certainly is, Councillor Howard. We're welcome to the team. Editorial genius. Uh, we grabbed it and we put it in, and the additional points you made about anxiety, etc., were superb. So they were in there, I can assure you of that. Okay, that's great. And you, so you would have picked up on my additional points on uh, page 31, 52, 59, 64, that I'm examining now. They're all in there, and particularly like the reordering to group the uh, sets of positive ideas about RCP6 higher up and then uh, pull the uh, one in 100 ideas lower down. So we've done that. Thank you so much for feeding those through via Laura. Okay, and my other one's a question. Um, to start with, I was very much about pushing option A first, because I thought, well, why? We should go to the higher value, and then when it goes out to community consultation, we've got their money there to consider the lesser. Um, since listening into the regional council meeting yesterday, a further information back and the pros and cons, I understand your reasoning for going for option B. But I want some reassurance around, you described the ponding behind option B, I want to know where this is, that we block off that, um, the drainage, where does this ponding go to, or is it a matter of keeping existing drainage and putting a floodgate? Have you proposed to mitigate that, or what is the potential um, losses to those property owners? So how, how do we mitigate um, those factors by looking at option B? Uh, thank you, Councillor, uh, and Mike in part answered this. This challenge between option A and B has been a big one for us. We've been back and forward on it via TAG with our engineers and with uh, modeler Supremo, uh, Matthew Gardner, on uh, more than one occasion. And it's a fine line call. Uh, in the end, it fell in favour of option B on the basis that it shows integrity and substance in the complete case we're putting up to central government. And I had a little nod from um, Paul Barker in affirmation of that in a conversation last night, which was welcoming to receive. Um, 
but the fact is the matters you've raised are relevant and um, the detailed design, the uh, consultation with individual property owners, the possibility of uh, individual houses being bunded, uh, the need to ensure that drains are working highly effectively to remove ponding stormwater, and the final design and alignment of the proposed embankment in that location are all matters that will require detailed attention. Um, we're pretty confident that option B is the preferred, but that does not mean to say that option A should be discarded. I think we've got to kind of keep it live, and we've written our language in the business case to keep it alive while expressing a clear preference for B. Thanks, John. Any other questions? Councillor Weston? Yeah. Um, just maybe a question for uh, what they're um, With the evacuation route out of Westport, Garawaiti, from the bridge around on the state highway, uh, I can't find anything in there written about it, uh, whether they have an input into it or not. But surely during a civil defence emergency, that's the first place to get the uh, Just wonder whether that has, has been raised. Um, Mike, do you want to comment on that? Certainly, we've considered the need to uh, put evacuation plans on steroids uh, and have them uh, well telescoped in advance of, of the flood. Uh, but in terms of the rejected options, we looked hard at whether there was a culverting option on either side of that embankment leading up to the Arawati. It proved quite troublesome and its contribution towards flood mitigation uh, was minimal, was uh, Matthew Gardner's view on it, plus the constructability within uh, a, a wetland of some significance uh, would have proved challenging from a resource consent uh, point of view. Um, so, Mike, on the evacuation question, we absolutely accept your point, Councillor Weston, that it's a critical route, uh, and uh, we've had conversations with Waku Kaitahi about ensuring that in their planning, uh, they move forward in their 50-year um, their strategy. Uh, they're, they're looking at both bridges to ensure that they're able to deal with these floods more effectively than currently. More to add, Mike? Yeah, so what, yes, Councillor Walker Korta, he was engaged in engaging throughout the process and, and very forthcoming, actually. So, so um, they definitely have an open mind. Uh, towards uh, um, the tail end of the proposal, we, we have got a proposal there for a sum for civil defence, uh, or I think we're calling it a resilience officer, to assist with um, evacuation planning and to help pull together uh, um, so, sort of some of the operational evacuation issues that, that uh, um, have been vexing um, some residents. So um, that's where we've kind of uh, pointed to with respect to working that up, is, is to use that uh, funding either by hiring a person or via um, a, a secondment to be the focal point for the sorts of evacuation planning that you are talking about and to bring together all of the relevant stakeholders, including a Kotahi, to make sure that those evacuation plans are, um, are understood, are socialised and are enduring. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. That's of course. Yeah, it's not a question, just an acknowledgement. Um, I like to think that you had a snowball's chance and how of pulling it together in the time frame you have. You know, I just want to acknowledge that I, I you know, I admit my mistake. You know, I absolutely um, taught all the people who put so much work in to get it to the stage on behalf of um, Westport um, residents. So, really, congratulations, all the people on the team. Um, and it must have been a real team to have got this far. So, good on you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. So, we're ready to move this. Thank you. Council Hall's got an ahead of me. Obviously, I have to say very similar facts, and I have expressed that to John and Mike in the past. So, well done to you guys and everybody that needs involved in their own team and um, those that are here that we can't get. Um, because it's just an outstanding law. Thank you. Um, I do have a, a few things, but, um, and I want to say thank you also that there's a few comments that I've heard through from the CEO and that have made it through to the cut. I do have a number of quite minor things that I'm not going to, to bring up here, but I'll give my copy to be scanned to send, send through to you. A lot of it's probably already been picked up. 
But my major thing is, and it's not going to be a showstopper for me because I'm not going to let it be. But my question is, just because I like it recorded, is around um, what's been allocated for resource consents, owner agreement, council project management, and final design. If this won't be used to either John or Mike. That I don't think a million dollars is enough. I think that's extremely light. I think that what we, we just don't know what's going to occur in, in that realm. And if I, if I lump all those things together, in my mind, I come up with far more than a million dollars. And I just, um, if I may pose a question to John and Mike, how you came to that figure. And um, I'm sure there's some um, element of uh, calculation behind it. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for that question. Uh, there's always calculation behind it. Uh, in effect, uh, advice from our uh, resource consent uh, consultant um, from Nelson, uh, and also the experience of uh, Gary Williams, who is probably New Zealand's leading flood management engineer and has been involved in these sorts of projects for 40 years. And you remember at um, the workshop session, he says, I got no problem building it. I've just got the problem in ensuring that it gets the consent and the access and the constructability. It was a sobering and realistic comment. Uh, so it was he that led out uh, and said, well, you'll need a million dollars worth of contingency. And we shouldn't forget that. Uh, and you'll need at least a million dollars uh, of funds for resource consent and access and permissions and the like. Um, and I think, you know, we, we may well get some challenges out of central government around the 10 million for the adaptation fund. And we'll need at least that, I think, um, although we'd have trouble pushing it any harder, quite frankly. Um, it may well be that we can view some of that as a means of helping us through uh, some of these unknowns as we move through the challenge of resource consent uh, and the process of consultation. Mike, um, more to add in on that? No, no, not really. Uh, we, we did take advice, uh, um, Deputy Mayor Roach, and, and um, that's what we've based our calculation on. Um, you may well be right. I guess only time will tell. Thank you. I just want to be recorded. And, uh, I accept your explanation, and I'm not trying to prove that I'm right or wrong, but I think it's important just for everyone to understand how those figures were derived. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's me that has decided it needs to be someone else who moves it. Deputy Mayor Roach, where's the recommendation? Council authorises Mayor Clyde and myself to sign a document for Kawatiri Deacon Swift, proposal to the Honourable Anaya Mahuta, Minister of Local Government, Cull Best and Best and Resilience on behalf of the Board of Council. Will somebody second that? Councilor Rothman. Seconded. Councilor Rothman. Any questions? Yep. So, do we need to add into that resolution subject to minor changes? Because what we're debating is the important here is not going to be the final The very minor editorial changes. From a procedural point of view, this is the exact same recommendation, except with the exception of um, it was Chairman Birchfield. Um, if we alter the resolution in any way, um, then um, we have to go back to West Coast Regional Council if we do additional amendments. So I think um, as a council are comfortable that as long as we record that there are um, minor amendments um, in the minutes, that might be more satisfactory. More than satisfactory, I should say. Yeah. Yes. Just for a very good council, um, one question I do have before we vote is. I know um, Iwi are also a signatory to this. Is there any feedback that anyone can share with us around Iwi's view on the business case? Uh, yes, Mayor Klein. So, so um, it, um, we're in touch with Francois and Nati Waiwai. Um, at, at this stage, they are comfortable overall um, with a couple of um, uh, qualifications which we have included in the business case. So. I'm actually in Francois at the moment trying to get his electronic signature so we can add that to the document. So uh, as it states in the draft, uh, uh, generally speaking, RTYY are, are supportive. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
emergency and Kelsey, how did you work with others? I was just going to talk to um, a similar one to what the Indian does, and I think actually the West Coast Regional Council one, they actually did change their resolution to include um, minor editorial um, uh, changes, and I think they actually said the CEO could actually just sign off any editorial changes. Uh, yes, I'm um, just um, the advice that we got through from West Coast Regional Council is that they passed the resolution as written. So they did. Can you clarify that, John or Mike, please? No. Ah, uh, yes. Um, uh, subject to minor editorial corrections, and uh, I think we've got them all, but if there's any more, um, we'd appreciate receiving them uh, as soon as we can, preferably this evening, so we can get the processing done tomorrow. So, thank you, Mr. Mason. So just to be clear, uh, the resolution was passed with the words subject to minor. Re just restate what you said there, please, John. Yeah, you wrote, you helped me out here. My minor editorial corrections uh, and uh, those at uh, the discretion of the chief executive of West Coast Regional Council. In that instance, that's how it was, Mike. I think wasn't it? Correct. Thank you for that clarification. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. So we got both an additional sentence subject to minor editorial adjustments at the. To be agreed and approved for amendment by the Chief Executive Officer for Justice Cases Board to the Minister of the 30th of June 2022. Are you happy with that second? Uh, so, look, I'll just quickly speak to that. I mean, the resolution uh, regional council yesterday was made in the open knowledge that it would be coming here to us this afternoon, and they couldn't prevent anything that we might want to do. I think we've done it thus I, I don't think we need to leave open. Good yeah. So I'll move on to page 81. No, we're not there. No, we're not there. No, we're not there. We can provide them. Yeah. Um, could I suggest that Council Montgomery has any amendments that she marks them up on my copy that I've marked up on, and that we scan this copy and send it through? to John and his mic by the evening, rather than, because I don't want to go through all the pain of every small amendment. In my view, Dick, we're talking about spelling mistakes, full stops, that kind of thing. I don't think they're material, and I think anyone in this room now is aware that that is, to me, it's an operational thing to get that corrected. I don't think it's very effective. We've all agreed. We've got a process. Go ahead. Well, I'm seeing mine isn't just mine isn't just spelling out the suggestions. Things that could be slightly and, and not material. I'll admit that not material. I just don't see what the issue with is of not having that side of the position to the resolution. Well, we're seeking to just agree. I just need some clarity. That's what the addition of removing minor amendments. Yeah. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Can you just clarify what's been the list of the initial Yes, so it's as written with the initial sentence say. And and other minor uh, editorials to be included to be agreed and approved for amendment by the chief executive officer from the full list of cases for the list on the 30th of June 2020. So we're moving to the now. All those in favor. Any against? That's the one of that's motion is carried. Thank you very much. Thank you um, to our team and John. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.
Right. Very good. Thank you, Councilman. So we got Gender item 10 is the people panel's um, report, final review. Now, this has been um, uh, largely uh, chaperoned to this point by Councillor Brunton, so I will allow him to um, speak to the paper and, um, and uh, we'll, we'll proceed from there. Councillor Brunton. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'll just start off by saying thanks very much to the team for progressing it to the stage. It's been hanging around for quite some time uh, now. In fact, I think it's about 12 months since um, we first discussed that, that we needed to you know, get the seats provided because of what was happening within our community. Um, obviously, what we think is an easy piece of work, you know, just change a few words and tick the box and you'll be right, is totally different to what happens in real life when you're talking um, about bylaws. So, just want to acknowledge the team's work here and apologize for um, the length of time it's taken to come back on the table. Obviously, among the underlying, so a whole other underlying factors we're all well aware of the COVID, and all these other things that the team uh, we're working on. So, with that, uh, taking that into account, I see we've got um, Sean, the manager of Legal Avery, on Zoom this afternoon. Thanks for joining us, Sean. Sean will be able to answer any specific questions you may have. Uh, and in terms of the consultation process, it will follow if you approve this draft. Um, I'm sure that also on that team can help uh, in that matter. Um, so, look, um, on that basis, I assume you've all uh, read the paper and um, so happy that we now consider it. Uh, open it up for any questions, and if I can answer them, I believe it's all in the question. Thanks, Councillor. I'm happy for questions to go back to Councillor Rodney for all these. Can we move the rest of the question? Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah. Well, I think we've made really, really good progress. Um, and in general, I support it, but I just feel that the maps that have been provided it is definitely a clear way of looking at it. But it I'm a bit worried it's catching a lot of lifestyle blocks. Um, I'd probably feel okay for it to go out as a draft and get feedback because uh, I've got my own feedback at Westport once, but it's probably properties in other areas that too that think that they are catched and see themselves as a, a lifestyle rural block and uh, whether it's sustainable foods or whatever like that, that they have uh, more animals than this new one would allow. One striking one, I think, an existing boundary is, for an example, that it captures the town a land. To me, I see that it's clearly rural, and I'd, at the very least, I'd be seeking for a realignment along maybe even to a road. Um, but yeah, I'd like to see some boundary changes, but it may be better to make for our public consultation to keep all the feedback rather than trying to twig it now. Would you have any feedback on that, um, Sean? Sure. Okay. You're on mute, Sean. Thank you for the question, Councillor. Uh, look, look, absolutely. Um, the maps, I'd imagine, would, would um, have some responses during that process, consultation process. Um, we've done our best to go through each one, but yeah, I'm sure there's some little tweaks um, that will make them slightly better. Thanks, Sean. I think also I would respond. Uh, this was one of the big uh, delays in getting this brought forward to council. How do you find the area that you wish to control the bylaws? We, we know that we had a number of um, previous uh, goes at it. You know, what was referred to in the uh, district plan as being residential and all that. But in the end, um, I think this was taken on board with some help from the legal team. Uh, Believe you're correct in saying that. So, as as um, Mount Sean quite rightly points out, when we go to the consultation, there will be an opportunity for people who fall within that affected area to, to submit to the game. Council Hawkins. Yeah, yeah um, yes, I just had a question around the uh, article 12, page 234, uh, the keeping of pigs in an urban area. 
and it, 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 it says more than in brackets, no number of pigs. So we haven't stipulated um, our preference, and we haven't obviously decided on that. But I would have thought that seeing that the um, problem that brought us to this was a uh, noisy rooster, that maybe um, even one pig might bring us another problem of far greater magnitude. So um, I just wonder how your feelings were around keeping pigs in an urban area. Sean. Uh, there, thank you for the question, Council. It was on my list of a couple of things I did want to draw to your attention um, today, and that was one of them that we do need to set a, a number there. Um, in terms of my my views on that, uh, I guess we, we haven't had many calls or many issues regarding pigs, for sure, but um, I would think anything more than two could um, become problematic, so it is something we'd ask you to turn your mind to. Um, just a couple other important things, I think, um, if I may just raise. Um, since you last saw it, it has had quite a bit removed from it. Um, the legal team and myself went through it line by line and did remove quite a bit of um, the content. A lot of that was positive uh, realigning and making sure that um, wording was consistent through the document and then extra wording that wasn't required where it refers to other acts that just weren't needed and the view of the legal team have been struck out but I guess the intent hasn't changed and then the other little thing I would like to add is um, um, we, we had were seeking clarification around any ability for instant infringements and that was ruled out uh, and then there was a power of seizure which um, appeared in this uh, first draft and been removed instead and relying on section um, 165 of the Local Government Act. So that, that part of it has been removed, which, which is a, a power of seizure via that act, via a warrant. So I just wanted to draw that to your attention. But yeah, certainly coming back to the, the pigs, um, well, I haven't had any complaints off the top of my head in regards to those in, in recent years. Uh, thanks, uh, Sean, and thanks, Councillor Hawes. Clearly, um, if we are going to adopt a recommendation, I've already included it, but a number of you we can't open in. So, you know, when, when we come to the draft recommendation, um, I believe we should have additional reference to that clause, and we'll take advice on what we need to do. Just uh, well, from what I'm hearing from uh, um, you know, there hasn't been an awful lot of complaints, and he's suggesting perhaps two um, is a number, so I'll throw that up into the mix. But I'd also like to acknowledge Sean, um, uh, concern, the concerns around um, some of the very stringent uh, build requirements for um, keeping for hen houses has been removed, which I acknowledge, and um, I think you um, really well encapsulated the uh, the need to keep the conditions um, you know, clean and tidy and um, nuisance free. So I think that's really really freed that up. So I just want to acknowledge that. And I suggest we go with two picks, um, which was initial four. Thanks, uh, Council. Also, you, you clearly received the paper that there are two suggested uh, recommendations, but I'll Pretty sure that it's either or, one, it's either one or the other. Am I correct in that understanding, uh, John? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, when we talk about keeping of animals, we don't actually specify birds, and we have poultry, but well, that's where it stops. So if you've got a screaming galah or a Right. And you've got a galah or a. <laughs> right. If you've got birds that screech a lot, um, they will come underneath the, uh, under the you know, noise category we put it on. And we don't actually specify birds. That was actually a really serious question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our birds, our birds uh, is there any provision anywhere here? I can't see it, which, which has birds and, and um, uh, those who might create a service. Uh, yeah, thank you for the, for the question, Councillor. Um, I believe that in the keeping of other animals. 
noise certainly the noise provisions under the RMA doesn't capture that. I believe the um, there is a provision in the uh, and I'm trying to flick between screens on a laptop. I believe that is accounted for. Is the burden animal? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's probably enough by interpretation. Animal means any member of the animal kingdom, including any mammal, bird, sunfish, shellfish, reptile, and the venom and vertebrate, and includes the young. So, bird is now. Just a comment to the parents, I think. Parents, so, reach it for partner or neighbor, you can do it in the other. Thank you, thank you for some uh, creative thinking. Um, I think we need to carry on with the central bylaw, and I don't think it's about the description neighbor. Uh, I do pick up that the uh, bird is undefined uh, as being an animal, and there is the section on keeping of animals which cover uh, those concerns where it's quite mentioned about private information. Keeping of cats in the urban area. <coughs> you have to get permission from council, uh, Sean. Um, how long would that permission be granted for? This is for cats. So, yeah, sorry, Council, I didn't quite catch that. Was that, uh, if a permission is granted, how long would that permission last for? Yes, three. I don't think I've considered that to any great degree. Then, sorry, sorry, if this helps. If, if approval was sought and given, in my point at that point in time, would council have the ability to put in a defined term um, of the, the, the replies to? Mm -hmm. Sorry, Sean, did you get that? I let you are a little bit hard to hear, but um, look, I, I don't know the answer how long that permission would would last for. Um, and that is something we'll just have to look into if we if we um, want to um, flesh that out. Okay, look, um, I guess what we need to do is we need to get this at least to the point where we send it out for public consultation. Otherwise, it's just going to carry on. And I don't want to see that. Um, I'm sure none of you here do. Uh, are you okay that we actually move one of the recommendations and probably it'll be recommendation two with the following operation and that operation will be the number of things, two being two, uh, and on that basis if the council are prepared to consider that recommendation, move on, and then we know we can put it out to consultation. Is it am I being unreasonable? No, I'll move that. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Over. Carried. Thank you, team. Um, I'll now leave it open to our team to progress this. And I guess um, between Sean and Rachel, we'll come up with a plan to get this out to the public. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Right, thank you very much. You know, item 11 which is the Green Waters Reform Better on Public Proposed Initiative. Well, respect for the time. That's okay. Great, thank you. Good afternoon, councillors. This is a continuation on from our workshop that we held um, last month in May, May, going through the processes and explaining the I'm assuming that everyone has read the paper. I'm not going to go through it. We've, we've done as much as we can. We've taken all of the comments on board and, and processed them, and they're in the process in the order that we um, all agreed on it, or that, that you agreed on. We followed that through. 
We were presenting it back to you now, really, so that we didn't have to progress it further if, if everybody is happy with that. But the key thing for this is that we have a deep dive in September that we get all of this work done by and loaded into the DIA system. <laughs> and what we're really asking for is that it's, it's noted that it's accepted as, as what we could agree or what was agreed to in these meetings. And that moving forward, once we've done the business cases that are required by the DIA, that our CEO can put this forward and we can go forward with it. There's also one um, piece of um, work in here that we've allowed for that should something be dropped off, we can, we can set that up into that. There's also, I think that's everything that we can do at the moment. And it's, um, it's, if there's any questions, we're happy to answer. Thank you, Mike. So just, just for clarity, what we're putting in here is this list, which then effectively uh, authorizes you to do the detailed workup that's going to be required to satisfy the application to into the UN notice process. So this is the workshop that we attended. I would like to observe this one. Any questions? Move one through three. Second with Councillor Bowden to move now. Second with Bowden. I will open up for uh, questions. You want to speak to it? <coughs> okay, questions, discussion? Oh, yeah. Um, I was the number of things on it, and it's a good way to from what was first approved. Um, no issues about the waste water. Um, as stated at the time, 500,000 for climate change, I think it's a little bit excessive. Um, and then I believe that we should be to the new one, 350. The civil defence. Um, I have issues there with the fact that we haven't had a civil defence person, how those figures have been arrived at. Um, and I'm just very conscious at the present time of figures not being as close to reality as what they should be. Um, airport relocation should be with the um, climate change because I see that one and the same, um, the relocation should be with the climate change. Um, one thing we're all looking at the issues, but I have a very serious concern about the Caramel. $65,000 for what? Um, I've had a breakdown of the costs incurred um, from a paper that wasn't accepted. And now that's accepted. We're expected to. Um, Use the business with money to pay for the costs that um, were incurred for a paper that we got ahead. And just 35,000, I've got a breakdown, some goes back, 35,000, my last two and a half years, to me is excessive. I stated when I spoke to Julia that there'd be nine different people have input plus consultants and legal um, into that report. Probably six of those people are still at council. And I just feel that that money should come out of the budgets, not to be taken out of the debt money. Because we have to really consider, and even with the next item, I feel quite uncomfortable with some of those costs. And we have to look at the reality. Because if you go back to the water line, the figure that we were looking at was 480 plus 25% 20, of we have gone the water tanks, which we have printed up to 600,000. The point I'm trying to make is the fact that you accepted $600,000 and gave $100,000 to so that cost was. Children, and I'm saying I don't think the best of money should be 
picking up the costs of consultation that didn't go in themselves. So I will deal with your questions. Uh, can can somebody or talk a little bit through what climate change budget is? I presume it makes the last strategic document. Yeah, thank you, Samir. Look, look, obviously, I'm going to support the expenditure on climate change. We do, it's in our LTP, uh, we consult with the community. They see it as being very important moving forward. We have both rather limited amounts simply because, again, we go back, we don't want to, uh, we don't want to get into a position where our rate payers find it unaffordable to deal with a, an issue that's extremely important. We're, we're dealing with this on almost daily, if not weekly basis. And we had, we've had some discussion recently about what's happening out, out in our community, out in Northern Bullock, Granity, there, all those um, effects of climate change. We need, we need to show that we understand the importance of this work. If we're going to have any credence in terms of working with central government when it comes to the national adaptation plan, which is well underway and we've already submitted on, all these things are going to result in some type of arrangement between local authorities and the central government. So how we are going to deal with the, all the issues in our district created by climate change. Not just here in this world, but right across the, 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 uh, the district. I think the sooner we can deliver on this work, the better it will be, both in terms of our community and in terms of our relationship and understanding the central government when they come to look at those people who may or may not need some type of assistance moving forward. The, we can show that we've seriously considered all those, all those matters. And we're right up front and we're there in the leading the pack in terms of how we want to manage the risks that we will be identified right through this process, um, then the better off we will be. So I fully support the 500. I, I know that there's been a bit of a breakdown um, from our team in regards to how that might, that expenditure will roll out in terms of the, uh, our commitment under the LTP. So I don't know if I can say more than that, otherwise. I Thank you. Is there anything more to start with the other chain? So the other question was around the civil defence um, scheme at this early stage is there any around what that is? Okay. <laughs> I know, just for yeah. a bit of counselor. Um, yes. Just so we did an analysis on, on the last few operations that we've worked in there. There's a whole lot of the equipment that needs to replace There's a whole lot of training that needs to put in place. We've done some cost analysis on this, so we have done a breakdown. We've got a, a number of bits on equipment, a number of bits on training, and a number of bits on um, just getting the right people in the right places so that we can do more to look after ourselves. And, and, and so that's where we've come up from these numbers. The, um, the, the better off tool also has looked at the same thing because they've seen the same problem. They've also looked at what we were putting up, they've also realised that it was too short, and they've also asked for extra money from the government as well to help do this. And it's all around making sure that we're a lot safer in our community and a lot better off. And I'm not sure how many of you have worked in there, there's, there's a number of you who have. But then what, what you actually do when you're in there is there's a lot of hard work, but the, the situation that we're in, we're very stoned. And this is how we're going to bring it up and put that in there. And those costs have been mainly around electronics, computers, you know, workstations for people, new, new TV so that you can actually see what's going on and understand what the processes are. And so that's where we've gone. Just so that you understand, we did, we did do a full analysis on it. And we've come back with these costs. And this is probably on the light side because, as you, as you saw in the video, of course, there's a lot more money that's going to be put into it. Is, is it, uh, yeah, thanks. So, by standing, just to, just to add to the, the um, I guess the, the strategic element to all of this is that a lot of this should be considered as our skin in the game for what are actually much, much bigger budgets <coughs> that are going to be required to satisfy these things. Correct, and, and that's um, what we've tried to do. We've tried to limit our skin in the game, and we've tried to also limit the cost on our rack notes yeah. as best we can. And the other thing just to touch on is the Relationships person with with DIA, so that this is 
then at least six chips. Yes, so, so our relationship manager with the DIA sets chips on these. Um, he, he's happy at the moment, he wants to set business cases, but he said some of these are really no brains for them, and they will do them quite easily as a couple that we've got to work a little bit harder on and then make sure our business cases stack up properly, but that's that's our goal. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yes, please. What is the fact that um, we are rated on your regional council for the um, civil defence, which is reasonable, and I think some of these are strict up to there. Likewise, um, there is quite a large allocation of money given from um, to civil defence for the equipment of lunch, and I just think the rest of this is kind of there. So, I can answer that just from, from, from the experience that I've had on site. Then that has gone, that it was absorbed pretty quickly into, into the movement equipment. It was not put into what I suppose the workstations and what the people actually need to do and the communications and the time cycle. So that's what we're concentrating on. And our partnership agreement into the West Coast Emergency Management um, has obligations for the council to, to provide um, certain level of stuff that our agents seem to provide in terms of equipment this reflects that and training and stuff that we can Councilor Yeah, I just wanted to um, touch on what uh, we just heard. That, that's around, um, we don't have a large council, we have a very small council, 15 years, the staff hasn't really grown. It's been kept compact and way right around doing that for um, as I source because you look at that work, it's already tied up business as usual. So I guess what, what this allows us to do is to, to put examples might seem to put um, a small small amount of money into developing up um, cases that then allow us to proceed to bigger words. Now I'm more than comfortable, I think that is a bit wrong. Future planning and putting that effort in now pays dividends in the long run. That whole experience, I think this is the difference. I mean, we've had a public speaker come along here today and suggest that we probably should be looking at the place of four parts in West I mean, that, 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 that's a one off expenditure of taking money and spending it there. Next week's flood comes and looks all of the extra off four parts along the road. But if you plan forward and you plan A to move the airport to be located, it's not that term where it is. You need to put money into that business case to develop up to try and then go to take it further. I think this is about future treatment. This is about putting ourselves in a fair position, heads up off, to move forward in the future. And I think that it covers off a very small amount. Um, it covers off a number of things in, in that plot line. And I'm more than happy to carry on this one. Thank you. That's Burke and Seek, and that's Patrick Burke and Paul Burke. When you consider the civil things, um, one's all very well having equipment in that building, and you consider the upgrade, but it quite speaks to me. I believe that's mainly along that has to go under the work. Is that considered? It was considered, but it's been considered under another business case. So that, that's been happening in the background. The reports that are coming in at the moment, so we can then look at how that goes out. We're getting up to the right and all the other. Thank you, Mr. Neil. Um, my question is just around the substitute option here, which is housing for senior, seniors improvement. So I guess what we would do is housing for the elderly. Now there was a body of work and a workshop uh, working party set up to to um, deal with whatever our strategic way forward was for housing for the elderly, which you know I can totally understand why it has maybe progressed as it should have because um, everything else has gone in the road. But I guess what I'm going to ask Mike is, does that fit in with whatever that, wherever that strategy has got to so far? Because I hate to see this as being a sort of standard loan um, project that didn't fit in, because we haven't established what that strategy is yet. So, so that strategy has moved forward in some areas, and we've been working with Christy on that, so that we can make sure that it aligns well, and, and that's why, why we've put that there. It depends on what the sort of, if, if, if something drops out above that and step up and it will be valued at whatever that the workload is and where they are currently. Yeah. I, 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 thank you, Mr. May. 
Um, so that there's a due to be a steering group meeting um, in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, the LDU housing where an update is going to be given across potentially different options on the table with other providers. The, the funding that's here around this, the substitute is actually around the current stock that we've got. So we know that we've been used, that we've not been in the position perhaps to invest. Um, and in particular, what we're looking at is the pension houses out of Reefton. We know that there's some challenges there. So um, the intent behind that was actually to upgrade some of the current stock that we've got from a, a comfort and model in the pension that's it. Okay, so that paper has been moved. Um, moved by Councillor Nasi, who is Councillor Bowden. Here's the actual <laughs> So, one that we know the report to approve the initiative to outline its reports progress to detail business case development and approve the corresponding business case to be submitted to the Department of Internal Affairs be completed. Move one, all three be moved by Councillor Nassi and Councillor Bowden. All those in favour? Any against? It's carried unanimously. Thank you. No, no, no. Oh, no. no. Sorry. No. Sorry. No. Sorry. No. Sorry. No. Six. The motion's carried. Right, we mm break. -hmm. Okay, our six councillors, we have a um, two minute um, this and reconvene at five. <laughs> Thank you.